morning and welcome to Oak Grove Mennonite. We're glad that you're able to join us. Join us now in the call to worship. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let all the people of Oak Grove say, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let all the earth declare, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Did you ever have technical difficulties? It seems like this is a year, 2020, for some technical difficulties. We're missing all you folks. Uh, uh, we would uh, love to have you here with us in this celebration of Easter. But we're using this time to remind us, at least I'm using this time to remind me that, you know, every Sunday for Christians is a little Easter. And so we have our big expectation of Easter Sunday morning with all of the celebration, and that's great and wonderful. But every Sunday morning marks that. And we've lit the Christ candle on our display by the cross uh, for our celebration. And we said last week uh, on Palm Sunday, when we come to the end of uh, the Lenten season, all of the candles should be extinguished. But because of our time of exile, we're leaving uh, a Lenten candle burn alongside whatever we else do for worship during these days uh, to remind us that we're in this period of exile when we're not meeting together. And we'll end that when we all can come together again. I do have a number of community life announcements for our congregational life. Just want to remind us that the spirit of Jesus is among us. And we're sensing that every day through this time of exile. During the days of this past week, we received lots of encouragement and positive feedback about our Palm Sunday experiment with live streaming. And uh, we continue that uh, with some changes today. And so we trust that you'll bear with us as uh, we work with that uh, through these weeks. The spirit of Jesus is among us. There are lots of people who are volunteering Almost every time I talk to somebody on the phone, uh, they say to me, is there anything I can do? Can, is there someone that needs any help? And I just really believe that that's uh, the spirit of Jesus among us. As a matter of fact, someone said to, to Miriam in a conversation, you know, I don't need the government sti stimulus check uh, that's coming out. Uh, do you know anybody that could use it? I'd love to pass it on to them. That's the spirit of Jesus among us. Um, and we want to thank you, those of you who have been expressing the spirit of Jesus by creating masks, the uh, material face masks. We thank uh, Deb Kurtz for taking the lead on that, inviting uh, all of the sewers, anybody who sews, to sew masks for the local hospitals in Worcester and Orville. And uh, there are still kits available uh, in the foyer. Uh, you can enter any time using your uh, keyless entry. However, if that's not working for you and uh, you need to get in at some other time, during the days of this coming week, I will be in the office 11 to 12 each day in addition to Thursdays 9 to 12. So if you can arrange to come during one of those times, uh, the door will be open for you. Um, we're uh, also someone called to remind me to say, if you're using that personal mask, the homemade mask, don't forget to wash it occasionally. You'll have to monitor when you need that, and uh, you should be doing that. Uh, the Spirit of Jesus is among us, and uh, this morning I want to give a big thanks to Neil for working many hours during the last couple of weeks to uh, get us ready to do some live streaming and he continues to work at that and we're grateful for that. And a big thanks for our participants again today. Along with Neil, Sam is at the, at the soundboard. Uh, you've already heard Dora and Maria who uh, were playing for us and leading our music. And in a few moments, uh, we will also give thanks to the Buller family who are sharing the children's story, Angela and Brett and Claire and Emily. Thank you so much for preparing that for us. Now, just a couple, uh, one more announcement and then two prayer concerns. I'm not very tech savvy, and many of you would know that, but I, I, and I'm playing around with Zoom. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to gather together with a group of people. Uh, but I, I don't feel real confident in that. But I just want to say, if you are feeling uh, the need for getting together and uh, you would like to experiment with that, get your Sunday school class together or a small group or even a family group that's not in the same household or even if you are in the same household on, on different uh, platforms. And I'd be happy to join you if you'd send me a link and uh, if you'd like to have a prayer meeting or a Bible study or or just a time of sharing together, I would love to join you in that. So uh, be sure to invite me if you do. 
Uh, we want to continue to pray for students across. There are so many prayer concerns, really. We think of the frontline workers and we, uh, who are giving of themselves as the, the coronavirus continues to spread. Um, and schools that are, uh, are not meeting, at least children aren't in the classroom and, and a number of communities around us, they've been on spring break and we can only imagine without the school activities that uh, there may be some of us pulling our hair out, but uh, we want to continue to pray and support and encourage to find activities that are meaningful and enjoyable for our children and, and pray for our families as we manage through this. Also today, another prayer concern, we want to remember the family of Nancy Hostetler Bishop. Uh, a number of you have connections with her. Uh, I know there are a number of cousins at Oak Grove, like uh, Ellen and Chuck and, and Lauren. There are probably numerous other people who related uh, to Nancy. She passed away on Tuesday, and we want to remember uh, the family as they grieve their loss. Please add uh, these concerns to your prayer list today. Miriam's going to come now and lead us in our pastoral prayer. I invite you to join me in prayer. And at the conclusion, I would like to ask you to join in the Lord's Prayer. And we will use sins. Let us pray. Gracious Redeemer, we come to you in the morning of the resurrection. We expect to find you among the tombs and grave clothes of our world. But you are alive. Sin cannot hold you. Death cannot bind you. And just as we have been weeping and mourning that you have been taken from us, you meet us in the garden of the new life and send us running to share the good news of the gospel to the very ends of the earth. You are risen indeed. We have seen you, and so we believe that joy comes from grief. But we acknowledge that much of our world is held in the grip of death and does not know the transforming power of the resurrection. We pray for those who are caught in violence Regime, regimes that suppress and repress. We pray for those who hunger, who are ill, who are without resources, and who grieve. We bear burdens ourselves and bring our own troubles and worries to you. Our lives have been turned upside down by this pandemic. We grieve the losses of many, including our own. Give us the courage to trust you with our burdens and know that when we cast our cares and anxiety on you, you care for us more than we can imagine. Thank you that you meet us at our point of need. We are grateful for the resurrection for without it, we would be hopeless. We thank you that it is not only eternal hope we have, but your presence here and now that continues to comfort, guide, and encourage us. Let us live in the knowledge that you never leave us or forsake us. May our joy take deep root and not be shaken by our circumstances. Because we are not left alone, we can join with one another and pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, everybody. Hi, Emily. Hi, Pig and Rabbit. Hi. Hi. Mm, I just got back from grocery shopping. Now I can finally take this mask off. Oh, that feels a lot better. All these changes in the past few weeks have just made the world feel like it's turning upside down. Emily, what's
what's changed for you? School's at home. School's at home. Does anybody else out there have school at home? I bet. Or maybe your parents are working from home. This time of year, we usually go to the park and we play on the park equipment. We can't do that right now, can we? We're just all working together to avoid spreading the virus. Pig and rabbit, are you feeling okay? I'm feeling okay, but my friend Mr. Tiger is feeling kind of sick. I'm okay, but I think during the winter I had the swine flu. Achoo! I think you should go wash your hooves. Well, let's see what I have in my grocery bag. Let's see, I picked up bananas. I got some carrots. I got eggplant. Found a pumpkin. Ah, last ingredient I need, eggs. And you should always check your eggs to make sure they're not broken. These don't look like the type of eggs I'm gonna need to make my favorite Easter recipe. Did you say Easter? Great, I can finally refill my candy bucket since I'm all out after Valentine's Day. Yes, Easter, the time of the year when I decorate eggs, hide them, and then kids of all ages search all over the yard. Oh, wait a second, friends. I don't think that that's the true meaning of Easter. I think there's a different meaning. And I think those eggs might help tell us what the meaning of Easter is. Can we take turns and open them? It's a donkey. Oh, it's a donkey. Can you show everybody at home? Yeah. Well, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and there were people that gathered around, and they laid their, their coats out on the road, and they waved palm branches to celebrate. Does anybody know what that's for? Me. Jesus ate the Last Supper with his friends. He used bread and a cup to represent the sacrifice he was about to make. Yeah, I think you're right, Rabbit. What else do we have? Money! Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Emily, there's another one. Praying hand. Praying hands, yeah. So when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to God to help get him through all the troubles that were still to come. Soldiers put a crown of thorns on Jesus' head and made fun of him. Hmm. Hmm. A cross. Yeah. And soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross, which probably hurt a lot. And he died a few hours later. Because God loves all of us so much, he was willing to sacrifice his son for our sins, which are things that we do wrong or ways that we act that don't please God. And even though it hurt Jesus badly, he was willing to do what God asked, because Jesus loves us too. A cloth! 
Jesus' friends wrapped his body in a cloth and buried him in a tomb, like a shallow cave. Hurrah! On the third day after Jesus' burial, his friends went to visit, but the stone covering Jesus' tomb was rolled away. Mm. I think this is the last egg. I bet it has something really, really, really special inside. <gasps> Wait. Wait a minute. There could be anything in there. I mean, so far, we've had a lot of really strange things, haven't we? I mean, who knows what the chickens were eating? Friends at home, what do you think might be in this last egg? Well, let's have Emily open. Emily, can you open it and see? Go ahead. It's empty. I don't hmm. believe what I'm seeing. What happened? I don't get it. Who stole the bacon? <laughs> Hold on, friends. I think the last egg was supposed to be empty because Jesus was gone. And the angel told his friends, he has risen. Jesus had come back to life. And in the Bible, Jesus told us where he went. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 2 through 4, says, Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in me. There are many rooms in God's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. I'm going there to prepare a place for each of you. After I've done this, I will come back and take you with me. Then we will be together. You know the way to where I am going. That's why the last egg is empty. Jesus is gone. He's alive in heaven. And if we ask Jesus to live in our hearts, we will get to be with him someday. Now that's what Easter is really all about. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Let me say it again. We are missing you. And, and some of you are missing the miracles of springtime at Oak Grove. Uh, of course, the grass is greening and the flowers are beginning to sprout. Uh, we have color across the road at the cemetery on the main uh, entryway, and we have flowers at the doors. You're missing the new life that is happening. It's a season for miracles. Springtime reminds us of this Easter season, of God's continuing activity. God answers prayer. We are people that believe in the supernatural. We pray and God acts. We invite God to do things among us. He acts on our behalf, whether in creation or recreation or even healings, and the surprising times when he answers our littlest of prayers. You know, Jesus' entire ministry was dedicated to showing his followers the new way of thinking, a new way of acting, and a new way of believing. 
But even so, it's, it seems nothing prepared them for this turning death into this new thing called resurrection. And I think many of us struggle with it too. Uh, of course, we have the advantage of perspective. Uh, we've been taught and even as through these last weeks of Lent, we have reminded ourselves the Lord is a hiding place for us. God is faithful to us and stands with us. God provides living water and Jesus has a healing ministry, opening the eyes of the blind, unstopping the ears of the deaf, healing leprosy. We know the stories. And as we noted last week on Palm Sunday, God helps us balance our joys and our griefs. But resurrection, no one expected Jesus to do it that way. The disciples were thinking, particularly on Saturday before Easter Sunday morning, that God's plan to bring a new kingdom had been a horrible failure. And yet our text today in Matthew's Gospel, 28th chapter, we read in verse 8 that they found the tomb empty. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. See the connection to last week? Grief and joy. Fear and great joy. And they ran to tell his disciples. And verse 9, suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What was it that these disciples were seeing? These women who had come to the tomb. What was the vision of the person that they saw? Who did they grab a hold of? They were convinced it was Jesus. Now, there are lots of supernatural things that happen in our world. Some people think that Jesus' resurrection is fictional, that he just appeared to die. And, you know, these days it's popular. People think about zombies, which are fictional characters of undead beings that have been created through the reanimation of, re of a corpse. Talk about walking corpses or the living dead. I know some of you in our church community are familiar with this. It's popular in horror movies and uh, uh, TV series. And, well, the zombies have been made popular uh, by programs such as Resident Evil, The Walking Dead, and Zombieland. Well, this term zombie comes from Haitian folklore. And... Uh, it, 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 in which a zombie is a dead body that's reanimated through various methods. Now, the Haitian people have believed over the years that voodoo sorcerers can bring dead people back to life. Maybe Jesus' return from the, the tomb, some people say, was just a little bit of voodoo practice. But the zombie is under the control of a sorcerer because zombies have no free will. And it's believed that a zombie's trapped is a trapped human soul. If a sorcerer can catch that trapped soul, the sorcerer becomes more powerful. Now, a number of years ago, uh, Wade Davis, a Canadian ethnobotanist, that's a, somebody who studies the effects of plants on people, uh, went to Haiti to, to research this. And he claims uh, that a person uh, can be turned into a zombie by two special powders being rubbed into a wound. The first powder brings a death-like state of certain poison. It's called uh, textox, textox, doxorizin or something like that. It's uh, the poison that is found in a Japanese blowfish. And at just the right amount, it can make a person almost die, but not quite. So maybe somebody shot Jesus with the blowfish venom of a Japanese fish, huh? Japanese blowfish. The second powder puts the person in a zombie-like state where they seem to have no free will at all. Now, many people outside of Haiti still do not believe. I don't believe it. Maybe you don't believe it. 
But in Haiti, lots of people still believe in zombie drugs. This could mean that while the drugs could have no physical effect on the person, there might be a psychological effect, like the placebo effect on people, so that they act like zombies. Well, zombies is a whole new field of study, and lots of people are interested in it. But the angel said to the woman, verse 5 of Matthew 28, Do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. It's true that after the crucifixion, the disciples fled in fear for their lives. But the angel said to these women, do not be afraid. And that's the message that the angel, uh, that's the message that Jesus also said to the women to carry to the rest of the disciples. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my disciples. Once they saw, touched, and spoke to Jesus, they knew that it was not a zombie. Their lives were transformed. They knew that Jesus was no walking dead creature. We have no record of a zombie inspiring a revolution. There is no history of a zombie vision of an upside down kingdom. There is no instance of a zombie transformation of spirit. No, these early disciples knew it was a risen Christ. They knew it was Jesus. And filled with the Holy Spirit, the disciples left their jobs and entered a new life of telling the world about Jesus. And as a result, they endured hunger and persecution, abandonment, imprisonment, suffering, torture, and even death. Former journalist Lee Strobel writes, People will die for their religious beliefs if they sincerely believe they're true. But people won't die for their religious beliefs if they know their beliefs are not true. Jesus is alive. The disciples believed it. They took hold of him. They knew it was their Lord and now Savior. We have seen evidence of Jesus. And so we believe that joy comes from grief. The Easter story is a love story. It's a story of a loving God willing to give God's self for the sake of his creation. The Easter story tells us how Jesus fulfilled all that God had promised. And God honored him by restoring his life and making him Savior and Lord. Oh, we know that the last days of Jesus were filled with dangers and sadness. Jesus, the king of the universe, would experience betrayal and rejection and insults as well as physical, emotional, and spiritual terror. Through it all, Jesus remained obedient to the end. But the Easter story does not end with defeat and death. It's a story of a great deliverance, God's great deliverance. And in a way, God had been practicing deliverance. He gave evidence of his plan and his design. Think back of God's people being delivered in the exodus from slavery. Think back of God's people being led into the promised land. Think back of God practicing deliverance by a royal dynasty for the, the Israelite kingdom. Think of Jesus and his practice of healing people, his ministry around Judea and Samaria. Think of Jesus who would even practice resurrection, the most notorious of which was Lazarus. But Lazarus had to rise to die again. But there was evidence that God was doing something. And on that first Easter, Jesus rose from the dead, conquering Satan, death, and the forces of evil. You see, Jesus atoned for sins. He reconciled us with God. And he gave us hope for a new future. Think about that. Jesus atones for our sins. We don't like to talk about sin. We don't like to talk about being disobedient. We don't like to talk about following rules. We're too enlightened. We're, 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 we want to be fulfilled. We want to be self-actualized. We want to have our own self-expression. But sin is simply rejecting God and God's ways. It's going it alone. Sin is saying, God, I can do it myself. 
And we sometimes think it's all fine and dandy. We can handle it. But it just illustrates. It just illustrates what a sense of privilege we have when we say that. I can do it myself. There's a worse virus than coronavirus. The self-serving human spirit virus. And it takes many shapes. Sometimes in popularity. Sometimes in power. Sometimes in fortune. Sometimes in privilege. And these forces that seize hold of us are a poisonous virus. And they tell us, I'm okay. And we're not okay. We need Jesus. Jesus reconciles us with God. Friend, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no better day today than to be able to declare that. Friend, if you're not able to declare it, today would be a good day to think seriously about it. You could leave this service today like those first witnesses, quickly, with fear and great joy because of your confidence in Jesus, the resurrected Lord of the universe who controls the power over death and the power over Satan and the power over hell itself. Jesus gives us new hope for a future. Easter offers us a personal relationship with God. Jesus conquered death. His deliverance gives us freedom to love. It gives us freedom to forgive. It gives us freedom to live without fear. It gives us freedom to live with hope. Easter is a story of love, folks. It's a story of victory and a story of new life. Easter is the greatest love story. It's about God giving his very life for me and for you. Let's not take it for granted. We need Jesus in our lives personally. We're grateful for the resurrection, for without it, we would be hopeless. Take it with you in fear, but with great joy and express it in life. I invite you today in Jesus' name. Amen.
receive now this benediction. May hope in the risen Christ sustain you. May faith in the risen Christ strengthen you. May the joy of the risen Christ radiate in your lives today and in the days to come. Go in the peace of new life. Amen.